What is good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Walk Entertainment News. I'm your host, DJ Bro. We are sitting here with the Prince Experience himself, Gabriel Sanchez. Man, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing today? Man, man, it is a beautiful day. It started out really nice and sunny, then the fog came out of nowhere, but I'm still keeping optimistic for it. <laughs> so um, what got you into Prince? You know, like, what? how did being him come around? Well, I was always a fan, um, but I started doing Prince in about 2002. I was asked to do a play. Um, you know, it's this little small local theater. They were super small. I mean, they were really small. Um, but I knew a friend who was involved in it, and so I would buy tickets for some of their shows. Uh, they did a, the wall and whatnot, like live on stage. And he said, oh, we're going to do Purple Rain, the movie, on stage. And I'm like, oh, I love Prince. I'm a huge fan. Let me know. I'm going to buy tickets and blah, 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 you know, just to go. And uh, he said, no, dude, we want you to be Prince. He said, you'd be perfect for that. I'm like, man, I never thought about doing this. I've never acted before. I love Prince. But, man, that's not easy stuff to pull off. And at first I said, no. I'm like, nah, I'm good, man. I'm like, I'll go to the show, but I won't do it. And I started thinking about it. And when I was younger, my sisters and cousins used to, like, go around the house and, and, and use our camera and just, like, videotape scenes. And I started writing things out, like, everybody's lines. And I was like, okay, here's your line and get all serious. And so I, I started thinking, you know what, I've acted before, I guess, kind of. So I said, I'll give it a shot. You know what, man, I'll do it. I told them I, I would. And uh, my friends heard about it. And I remember being in a bar, and they came up to me and said, so we heard you're going to be Prince in this new play and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, it should be fun. They said, you can dance like him and sing like him and play guitar and this and that. I'm like, Ooh, what did I get myself into? And I remember leaving the bar. It was some open jam we were doing. And I'm like, I, I got to go home. I put this, the album on. And uh, luckily, I have a pretty wide vocal range. So I was able to hit the notes. But I just had to learn how to color the notes to sound like him. I said, okay, I got that kind of down a little bit. I can at least work on that. I didn't really play lead guitar, but I have a pretty good ear to pick stuff up. And I have friends who play guitar, a lot of friends who play guitar that are really good. So I would ask him, well, what is this lick that he's playing during the song? So I would ask for help that way, too, and just get up every day and practice and study the movie over and over how he talked and acted. Um, so a lot of studying of that as well. And then as far as the dancing stuff, um. <laughs> like whenever I, I'm, I'm getting ready at the house and nobody's around I'm playing music and if something comes on I'll start dancing you know if it's a dancey song and so I knew I could dance dirty because when nobody was around I could do it I'm like well I could do that I can I can grind and act all sexy and whatnot but that's not me normally you know I don't walk around acting all you know prince like <laughs> so I said okay that's thing, those are things I can work on and uh, worked really hard. Fast forward to the day of the show. It went over great. Actually, it was three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It went over so good. I had so much fun. And uh, the reaction from the women were just incredible. I could not believe the reaction I was getting. Because I've been in bands before. And I mean, I've had girls getting, oh, yeah, you're in the band. But not like in this level. You know? were shaking your hips like that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, I think so. And so, um, like, I don't know how, how graphic you can get, but something happened after the show um, while I was walking out. But it was crazy. I'm like, man, this could be a fun thing to do moving forward. You know, I'm having a lot of fun. It's really hard to pull off. So I love a challenge, man. A good challenge to me is always fun. So I decided to get a whole group together and uh, a different group because the, the group that they had for that play um, they're from all over the place. They were way too far away. It would be too hard to do practices. So I got a local group together. And uh, throughout the years, I had to switch out members because um, I don't allow drinking before or during shows. Uh, I'm super hardcore on that. Um, if somebody's high or, or buzzed, you're not going to be at your fullest level. And you got to be great to pull us off. So, um, and nobody will ever be as, as great as Prince, but, you know, if you're going to try to be at that level, you got to be clear headed, you know? So, um, yeah, throughout the years, you know, you have to 
you know, for some reasons with ego stuff or drinking problems, I let people go. Um, the the current lineup that I have, I'm super happy with. I mean, just everybody is just super focused. Um, that couple of younger kids that I have, like one, like the youngest one is 25 years old. Um, kid is an amazing drummer. So i um, super excited about doing some more shows with all of them. But that's how it started, basically, um, about 2002. And I haven't stopped, and I'm still not tired of playing songs at all. Like every song that we do, I still love it from since like, as if that was the very first day I did it, you know? Yeah. Have you ever met Prince? Never met him. What? Um, he knew about us. I'm about to say, you're yeah, going he... around the country as him, clocking dollars I on know. him, and he didn't even bother to come to you to be like, where's my money? <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. Um, he, did, he did know about us, but um, he never really came to a show for some reason. I mean, I was... Maybe it's a good thing because I would have been too scared and nervous. You know, if I would have known he was in the audience, I'm like, whoa, whoa, man, there's no way I can do this. You know, <laughs> I was so scared. Um, but yeah, um, I saw him live. You know, I saw him live several times before he passed. But um, yeah, man, it's fun. I would have definitely wanted to. I, I, I don't know if you wouldn't want to reach out. To somebody who's literally touring the country doing this stuff, you know, like, hold on a minute, this guy actually is doing pretty, pretty well. Uh, <laughs> I see you got a lot of uh, on, on, on some of your pictures. Uh, I see all the different kinds of guitars that you use for your different shows. Yes, Which guitar is your favorite. Um, I it was kind of funny. Well, the the one that I like playing the best is my my blue telly. Um which is not a, a guitar that Prince used per se. Um, it's just a, a guitar, it's blue. Um, so it's it's not, I never really, back in that era that we're actually doing, he didn't really have a blue guitar like that. It was a brown one, which I, which I have. I have a, a brown telly as well. Um, so I have that, but my, my blue telly plays so good. And then I have the white cloud guitar. Um, that one, that one plays decent. It's not like one of the top line guitar. I had a custom made, but from some company that is just okay, you know. It's just, um, but it, it's. I wouldn't say prop, but I only use it for one or or two songs, you know. The the white guitar, the white cloud guitar, and uh, I recently added the cymbal guitar in as well. So that one again, I just stumbled upon that at a store, a local store here. Um, Somebody made it. It wasn't like factory made. You could just tell. But I'm like, you know what? It plays okay. Um, I think I'm going to buy it. I, I paid like three, only 300 bucks for it. So, because normally something like that would probably cost at least 1500 bucks. Um, so it's, it's okay. And it was used. So, you know, that's why it's cheaper too. But yeah, I mean, I have a couple of fun pieces that I like playing. But the, the blue telly is my favorite. Just the neck. Really <laughs> Uh, what was uh, uh you seen I, I you mentioned that you seen him a few times live. Uh, you never talked to him or met him or anything, so I'm assuming you saw a lot of interviews. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is one of your favorite moments from one of his interviews? Like one of your best quotes from him, or uh, some uh, a question he was asked that really made you go, "Damn!" You know what I mean? Like, what was your favorite line from him or quote? Um, I don't know if it's a favorite, uh, line or quote, but I, what really sticks out to me, what I think is really cool because it was a, a totally complete turning point for him. Um, his very first inter interview, which was with Dick Clark. Um, it was on TV live. Um, he was so nervous and scared. He car he hardly talked. <laughs> like, and, like he would ask a question. He goes, so you play all music? He's, he just nodded and hardly a word. And it was very awkward. It's kind of awkward to watch, but he was so mad at himself. He, he vowed he would never let that happen again. And so that was the complete, like his eyes opened. Okay, that'll never happen again. And and then did it from then on. Whenever he was on a, a big interview, it was like very smooth and uh, never happened that way again. So I like that. It was a, it was a huge page for him that he turned and said, that'll never happen again. You know, it's, that was just great for me. I'm like, wow. 
Um, where have you been in, like, I'm, I'm sure you've been in Tennessee, you know what I'm saying? So, like, where have you we been? Have, we have. We have. Um, and then I get band or uh, band? Venue, names, <laughs> yeah, venue names mixed up. Um, because you know, for, when you're traveling so much, like, oh yeah, well, there's like, there's a, a place um, called Bluestone, and then there's something else where blue stuff. So it's like that type of stuff even happens, you know, um, Bluebird, and just like, so things like that will also screw me up. Like, oh yeah, was where's the blue one? In, is that in Cincinnati or you know? So that gets kind of screwed up that way too. And it, when, you're, when you're in and out of town so much, it's so easy to get. Like I've said, like the wrong city, in the <laughs> so we'll be in, in Iowa, and I'm like, "Hey, Cincinnati," and I'm like, "Oh," and they'll get mad, you know? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite state to go to? What's, uh, like, and I say that because I almost want to say what city because you'll go to either Cincinnati or Cleveland and get two different vibes. You know, you'll go to Memphis yeah. and Nashville and get two different vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, uh, I damn should say, what's your favorite city? Man, oh. That is so hard. Um, <laughs> um, like, one of the most fun I've, we've had, because we hardly ever have time to go hang out in cities you you would think oh yeah you're a touring band and you've been here and there like oh yeah we've been all over the place but we don't really see a whole, whole lot because we don't have time you you know doing it you understand we, you we get into the town passing out the window we see the hotel yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> pretty much yeah it's pretty much you know a hotel venue or or somewhere where you're sitting down to eat that's basically what you see you know you don't have time to go to see the sites, really, you know. And so when I do have the time, it's really fun. Hopefully, it's a, a fun city, like like uh, like New Orleans, for instance. There's so much to do there. Um, we played there a couple of times, and we had the luck. Both like at least two or three times we were there, we could walk around. We had like three hours to kill, and there's so many things happening there. <laughs> Music, you know, constantly for one thing. Gotta go to um, the French Quarter and go grab yourself a hand grenade. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. Um, I would probably maybe I just say that city. I would say that because it was so much to do, um, and that was one of the few cities that we actually had time to go do stuff in. <laughs> you know, there were so many times I'm like, oh yeah, we're so close to do this, and but we don't have time. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I, I, I was hoping that we actually had time because this upcoming year we got a bunch of dates in a row and then two days off, a bunch of dates in a row, then two days off. And I'm like, cool, maybe we can have some free time in there. Our video schedule came out and no, those dates are filled. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so you, you, you said you were from Texas or yeah, born. Yeah, I was born in San Juan, Texas. Awesome. When did you come over to Milwaukee? Um, when I was about like two years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually I remember it though. It's crazy. I can remember back as far as two years old. You know, and I remember even asking my parents just to make sure like, this is what our house looked like in the backyard. And they're like, "How do you remember that?" I'm like, "I don't know." I remember. <laughs> Like one and a half or two years old. I was like, because that's where we were living. We were living in Madison, about an hour and a half from where I live now. And I would ask them, like, and this is how it looked at, at the end of our street, you know, about, they're like, yeah, there was a tunnel that we used to walk through. And they're like, how do you remember all that? I'm like, man, it, it's, it's almost like a dream, but I remember it. I do. I can see it in my head. Even the smells and just certain things, you know. It's crazy. And that brings me back to a lot of different things. The nostalgia should be a disease in its own. Cause, yeah. Uh, I was like, some people got dementia or, you know, Alzheimer's. No, I have nostalgia. Because, <laughs> man, it's like any time the wind blows, <laughs> tranced back. <laughs> right? Yep. Oh, man. Um, oh, you weren't really old enough to even really see if it was better or not now, man. Um... What, uh, so you're basically out of Madison? 
No, I was I was uh, raised there for maybe about a year or two, and then we moved here to where we're at. So big old Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right. Uh, but yeah, I've been here ever since then. Um, so I was about two and a half ish, and that I remember even more clear. I remember coming into town and, and even sitting on a, a chair, a little small kitty chair in a van, um, coming across a bridge, and I remember, okay, we're we're moving here now, and then never left. Was it winter time when you moved? Nope. Oh, okay. It wasn't. It was Did not. You freaking out over your first snowfall. That I don't remember. Um, because no, because even well in Madison we had snow. I remember being. Now that you're saying that, I could see it in my head. I remember having our our big boots on and. Um, you know, yeah, no, it was it was winter in Madison, obviously. So I didn't freak out on the. I don't know when my first winter was, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. What about your first uh, your first instrument? What that was... would be that would be a guitar at first. Um, no, I take that back. Um, drums. Drums. My uncle. So when I was about in sixth grade. Um. I started, I started taking sax set classes. You know how these those little um, classes you can take, and it was very easy for me. For some reason, I picked it up super quick. Where I I learned stuff by ear really fast, and so instead of reading the notes that they were trying to have us, I just learned it by ear. Like, oh, this is how it goes. Okay, I got it, and I was fake reading and playing it. They're like, oh, that's perfect, Gabriel. I'm like, oh, okay. And I just, and I passed with flying colors. And so they said, um, well, now, since you have such a great score, um, you can pick whatever instrument you want to have lessons on, whether it's piano, guitar, or drums. And I almost picked piano, um, but something in my gut said drums. And so I did. And it was just like the regular, you know, there, there wasn't actually drum set, just playing, you know, they were showing you how to do a single stroke roll, double stroke roll type stuff. And then, uh, and I've always been into like to, to listening to music. So drums stuck out to me. And so I started hearing more on the drums. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. And I started getting books, like different levels of books for the higher and lower sounds and started creating my own drum set and just started playing, putting on records and just playing along. And, and then one day my uncle, um, from out of town, noticed I was doing that too. And uh, he bought me a drum set. I was like, oh my God, you're buying me a drum set. What? So when he gave it to me, I had already, I could already kind of play from me doing the book thing. I'm like, oh, okay, though. I kind of have the vibe a little bit and uh, just started playing like five hours a day. I didn't want to put the sticks down. Like I had blisters all over my fingers. And I just still didn't want to stop. I would just like put the sticks in between my other fingers so I can keep playing. But I didn't want to stop. I'm like, oh, this is so fun. Oh my gosh, you know. Uh, so yeah, so I guess drums. I, and even today, I feel very comfortable playing a kit, uh, which I don't play as often because mainly my stuff is either singing or playing, you know, rhythm or, or lead guitar. Um, but now I also am playing piano more. So. Um, those are the instruments that I do play currently, but I would have to say drums was the first one. Yeah. How long has the Prince experience been out? Well, um, so I started doing the play in 2002 within the next year. So I would say maybe the 2003, um, is when I started playing with the band, with a new band, but it wasn't called the Prince experience. It was called purple rain. So, but rain, I had, I didn't want to have like R A I N. So, um, I, I spelt it different, but then I found that there was a band in Vegas called purple rain. Somebody said, yeah, there's a band already that's doing Prince and they're called purple rain. I'm like, oh man. But I said, I'm not going to do anything except for local. This is not going to be anything big. I'm just going to have fun and just do local stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep it. And, uh, so I, I think I had mine spelled P E R purple rain, just so it's different. And so it wasn't like, like exactly. So they wouldn't say anything. 
Um, and the other guy, Vegas, is Rain, R-E-I-G-N, you know. And at some point within that first year, I wanted to go out and see him just to gauge where where he was at. And I'm very brutally honest with myself. Um, and so I'm not one of those guys, oh, yeah, that sounds great. When it, to, to me, it doesn't. You know, if something, if I'm doing isn't good, I'm not going to lie to myself. And so I remember going to Vegas, bought a ticket, sat at the back of the room and watched the show. And I'm like, God, this, this guy is pretty good. Um, looks good, you know, sounds good. I remember closing my eyes and thinking, man, this dude sounds just like Prince, even when he talks. I'm like, holy shit, man, that's pretty good, man. I'm like, I got some work to do. And, but I did tell myself, but my show was better at that point. The show that I had, had put together um, and so even to the point where it, after a while he heard about us, I think, because they had people coming to our shows. Like I had, like, I would do stuff and think, okay, Prince did this and I want to do a different twist on it. So like he would have girls in bras and underwear. Right. So I would have my singers, um, I said, go out and buy a bra and then, and then give it to me. I'm making sure it's, it's white or black, whatever, whatever certain color it was. And I, I glued um, like rhinestones on it. So they had like these rhinestone bras. And that's not, not something Prince did, but it's something he would have done. Like it's something like a very Prince-like, you know, have his girl in a complete bra. You know, that's just all rhinestones. Um and so I had a dancer come out on our stage like that, and she would do this little chair dance and and this and that. And so that was a thing I thought of again, having her rest to bring a chair out, and you do this real sexual dance, and I'm going to walk out there. And we had a guy taking photos that we didn't know who he was. Pretty soon afterwards, we started noticing the guy in Vegas had a girl dancing with a a bra with the rhinestone bra and a chair. I'm like, what? So it's kind of crazy, you know, I'm like. I can't really get mad because I'm just copying Prince, but he's copying me, copying Prince. Like, no, because kind of no, because Prince didn't do it. He would have done it. Yeah. But he didn't. You did it. That yeah. was your thought. That's bogus. Yeah. yeah. And then so then um so then fast forward a couple of years, and whenever I'm singing, um, especially live, um, I'm it's like I'm standing outside of myself listening in and i'm constantly going okay are you in key um how are you holding those notes um are you are you coloring the notes right you know all these things are going through my head as i'm doing the show you know constantly and if i if i'm off i hear I'm like oh watch yourself when you come back to that you know so i'm very picky you know and i'm always trying to get better like what if i took a breath before this word will it help me get because you know breath is your your, your lifeline for singing you know and so my yeah, that's Something that I'm always constantly, what if I breathe, you know, breathe here instead of here? It's something, you know, and then throughout the years when you do a song over and over, you'll know where to breathe. Yep. And then that's where you get the best sounding notes, you know. And so years and years of me doing that, all of a sudden these songs are getting better. And I, I would hear a video of me doing a, a show a year or two before. I'm like, oh, that's how I used to sing that? I'm like, I sing that way better now. I'm like, well, that's good. Good to see that from back then, you know. I'm like, I'm getting better at least, and it's constantly. Even today, I'm. How can I get better? I'm, whether it's singing, dancing, or playing guitar or piano or whatever. So then, fast forward even a couple of years later, um, actually about four years ago, we had played Vegas, um, and I went to go. Um, I bought tickets for the entire band to go see his show. The guy out there. And um, I remember, first of all, being bored because he was just very boring. He lost whatever kind of vibe he had. He just was, he looked bored, didn't look happy. Maybe him and that and his broke vocals, out. yeah. And, and, his, and then his, his voice was nowhere better than what it was. Not that it sucked. But, like, he wasn't doing those high notes that they end up, he didn't even do Doves Cry. He didn't do hardly any of the big, the big songs, like, like Kiss, Doves Cry, um, you know, all those the big songs. But, you know, at the end of, of Doves, he does those high screeching notes. It took me years to learn how to do that. I do those now, 
but he doesn't do any of those high screechy notes, those really super high notes that he does that, that, that. I mean, I do that super loud. That's a quiet version of that note, but I do that like loud, loud. And it took me again years to figure that out. And nobody taught me that. Um, but it's just years of me going, how could I try to achieve that note and just practicing and just messing around with different things in my throat? And so I, I'm constantly trying to evolve where his vocal pattern is stopped. Like he's like, okay, I got to this point. I'm done getting better. He doesn't suck, but he's not better, you know? And if you're going to be Prince, if you try to sound like Prince, you, you never stop learning because nobody will ever be that good, you know? So you got to keep achieving a higher and higher level, you know? <laughs> when did you start going national? Just before Prince passed, we started going more out of town and that crazy far out. So just before Prince passed, um, I should say. But then once he passed, it was like, I had to have somebody take over, taking my phone calls, my texts, emails, everything. I just, I wasn't even eating. I was so busy, literally. It was, I wasn't even thinking about it. Like, there was constantly emails. Like, I had, when he died, the day he died, we have four uh, TV stations around here. Channel 4, 6, 12. And in this, uh, they were all coming around, literally waiting outside of my house in a line, waiting to come in and talk to me because they knew the Prince guy, you know, will have something to say about Damn. this. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm like looking out my window, I'm like, wow, Channel 4, Channel 6, <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was like, and I was not eating, I was just not even thinking about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, I'm kind of hungry, but I got to finish this text or... I got to finish this email or whatever it is or make this phone call. And then come 10 o'clock at night, oh, wow, I am I need to get to bed. Um, but I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> and I was, like, losing weight, and it was just crazy. So I had to have somebody take over. And that's how it got, it got further and further out, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, I guess that doesn't cause very much... Uh stuff to do outside of music anymore it's now kind of like does it do, do you feel in a way like since since you weren't really like doing all that you know yeah you were doing your thing around here but you weren't really doing all that but then the day he was all of a sudden do you feel like um you kind of replaced in a way or like people because people have been looking to you to fill those shows where they would want Prince to look at you as the next best stuff. How does that make you feel? Yeah, okay. Um, I don't see that. I've heard people say that, but I will say this over and over again. No, Nobody will ever be able to actually replace him because he was almost like not human. Like, I still can't. <laughs> like, how somebody can be that fucking talented? I'm like, really, dude? You're going to be, like, pick anything that he did where there was vocals, he excelled beyond so many people. Um, guitar, just a you know, phenomenal guitar player. Piano, like, come on, dude. He's a like, just incredible pianist. Um, dancer, anything he did. It's like, how can one person be that good at so many things? It was just insane. And then, he, then on top of all that, he could write the music that he wrote. You know, it's like just genius, complete genius, you know. Crazy. Yeah, he knew exactly what he wanted with his music. Yeah, but but people had did in fact at our last show. In fact, again, somebody said that he goes, "Man, you're you're my my guy." And all you know, he was basically saying that you know, when he needs a Prince fix, he wants to come see us play. I'm like, well, that's great, and I love that because I'm a total pleaser. And watching people having a good time at our shows, that's what feeds me. You know, that's what makes me want to keep doing this. As long as they keep wanting to come see our shows. Because we're we're so hard on ourselves, the entire band, you know, whenever something is wrong, like, right? well, that part didn't sound right. We need to fix that. That drum fill or let me whatever it is, I said something at a wrong time, or I, I sang it at the wrong whatever it is. And everybody does their says something. You know, it isn't just me. Like somebody goes, Yeah, that was not tight, or whatever, and we'll work on it, you know. We're constantly always doing that. So and people see that, or they can actually tell because 
they they see that the the quality of our our show is high you know and if i've dropped songs if something doesn't sound good good enough i will drop it and there have been songs that i've dropped you know i mean yeah, this isn't sounding good enough we're not playing it you know until right, we get it right yeah <laughs> exactly you know because if you're not going to do it right don't do it at all that's my whole motto you know well, you've been especially doing prints definitely <laughs> been out there doing that uh, so, but b- before you were running around the country, um, what did you like to do? And I'm sure sometime you like to tell your people, don't schedule me for a certain amount of time because I like some meet time. What do you like to do in that meet time? Um, well, I paint. <laughs> That's you painted the, that? Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like to paint on the side. Um, I like to read. Um, I love being outside, even if it's just going for a walk, you know. Um, but yeah, and traveling, I love to travel. I even though I travel a lot with the band, again, like I said before, you don't really see shit. So when I travel, I I go to Florida at least once a year, at least once a year. Um, but yeah, I, I like just to just to keep busy, basically, or go see live music, um, especially if I'm off um, and I'm here in town. I try to go see friends play, you know, if I don't like to sit at home on a weekend, if, you know, I'm not doing anything, unless I'm tired. If I'm, if I'm tired and I just been running too much and uh, there are times that I do just unplug completely, I will have my phone off. Um, but that's when something, when there's too many things happening at once that I can just feel it's too much. I will, I've like literally canceled things I've had planned. Like I'm not doing anything. I'm going to just get up whenever I get up and I'm not doing anything at all, all day or night, you know, and sometimes you got to do that. You have to, you know, or you might get sick, Yeah. you know? So, yeah. Is there a particular reason you like Florida? It's warm. <laughs> I hate winter. I fucking hate winters. Can I swear? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, man. You can do whatever you want. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I go out to Florida a lot. I got I got some family there. I've also lived there before. I've lived everywhere, but uh, I always, I actually just got back from Florida, and that was uh, it. It was crazy driving down there. It was snow all the way into like halfway through Alabama. Wow, really? I pulled into uh, Florida, and it was like in the forties. It didn't get up to wow, like the sixties, seventies, till almost a week later, and I was leaving. <laughs> uh, like, like the sun finally came on it's like well now is the time to go to St. George Island because I went to St. George Island before. and I'm like man uh, I, I uh, yeah <laughs> but um um I interviewed uh, Josh Becker a while ago uh, last year oh you did uh, and uh oh wow you mentioned that you uh that you guys do a lot of um like uh uh, full full band karaoke, live band karaoke type stuff, and uh, open jams yep. and stuff like that. You know, so yes, I could definitely see you really get burned out because you're not on the tour, but you know, even at home, you got stuff going on. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, how long have those been running? Are they still running? And when are they around? Like, yeah, Josh and I um, host um, in in open mic. It's it's kind of strange i call it a closed open mic because there's no list so basically it's called Polly's after dark and we open up the night there's always a featured band and then if there are people that we know that are in the audience that play we'll ask them up so it isn't like really an open mic because people don't sign up for it so they can't get mad oh i didn't get up well there's no list it isn't really an open jam it's a I, I call it a closed open jam. So we do that every Sunday at Polly's from seven to 10. Um, and then I host, um, I mean, I do solo shows uh, acoustically. Sometimes I have, um, so and what I do with that is I have my acoustic, my microphone. I have this box that has beats that I have programmed in it for, for certain songs um, with tempos and rhythms, whatever, a certain uh, feel for each song. And I start and stop the beat, you know, with my, my foot. Um, just to get more of a, a fullness, you know, to it. Um, I don't, I don't like backing tracks and that's as far as I'll go in the whole backing track world. Um, like I see people doing 
bass and a full drum set with drum fills and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine if they want to do that. This is not my my gig. I just am not into that at all. Um, I'll start and stop the, the, the thing because like you say, I want to extend the part. I can keep that beat going longer where if you have backing tracks, you got to see exactly where that track is going, you know? Um, so I just like the, the beat for that, you know, because it kind of makes it more full. Um, but then I have a duo partner who plays drums and he also sings. Very good singer. Um, I should say very good backing vocalist singer. He doesn't like to sing lead. He's very shy about it, which is very odd. But he's a very good backing vocalist and he's always sings in key and he's a very good ear. So it keeps me on my, my toes. So if I ever play like a, a wrong chord or or something, he'll give me like a little wink. Oh, I heard that. Oh, he knows. Oh, yeah, you, you played a minor instead of a major chord. You know, he'll kind of, ah, okay, you know, we'll kind of laugh. So and I like that because it keeps me on my toes, you know, like, oh, don't, don't screw up, you know. Um, and then if somebody wants to have a trio, like uh, even more, there's a guy that I play with who plays, literally he plays bass with one hand and keys with the other. And he also can sing harmonies, which is, I don't know how he does all three together. It's beyond me. It's crazy. Um, so and that's really a fun gig. I would rather do that more than anything because it's more full and uh, I have more freedom. Somebody asked for a song. Um, those other two guys know a lot of songs too, especially the guy who plays bass and keys. He knows like thousands of songs. I'm like, oh, let's do that. Oh, I know that already. And he starts playing it. It's crazy. He knows thousands of songs, all three of them. And... Yeah, it's crazy then. <laughs> I don't know how he retains all that information in his head. It's insane. Um, so yeah, so then I do that. And then if they want a full band, then there's another guy that I add who plays lead guitar because I'm not, I don't consider myself a lead guitar player. I can play some lead like that. Um, but it's not like something I would join a band to say, oh yeah, I'm a lead guitarist in a band. Yes, I play lead guitar in the, the Prince experience for some songs. But, and I know I could jam with people. Like, oh yeah, we're in the key of A. I don't know where to kind of play, but I'm not, that's not my strong suit, right, at the moment. Like I said, I'm constantly getting better, you know, you're always trying to learn, you know, there's, and it's going to be a never-ending process till the day I die, you know. Right. So, because there's so many instruments, like I want to get better at piano too, you know. <laughs> Out of all of the travels and all the weirdness, what is the weirdest encounter you've had on the road? <laughs> Okay. Giggles. Um, yeah. All right. I got to sip this. <laughs> so, like I said before, that with this gig, there's a different reaction to, with women. And uh, one of the main things that's different is they're not um, opposed to a lot of grabbing, you know. <laughs> So, and, and we call them in the band uh, the ba baby birds. <laughs> Do you know how, how little the baby birds are in the nest? <laughs> That's what we call. Them. Um. So there have been times like if we are too close to the audience, you know, and their hands can touch, their hands do touch and go all over the place, and I mean all over the place. <laughs> Just grab and. Uh, yeah, and when it first happened, I remember looking down and going, wow, and in front of everybody, you know. I'm like, is this really happening? I'm like, I've never experienced this. And to the point where sometimes I've even had them where a woman would be sitting there playing with me while I'm singing. And she turns to her friends like, come on, like it's a toy, you know. And I, what? And. I'm kind of used to it now. I mean, it's like if it happens, I'm like, okay, it's like, what? It's not like that anymore. I'm like, it's kind of funny. Like, wow, she doesn't care, you know? But it's crazy because if a woman, if that happened to a woman, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. You know, you just, <laughs> the whole crowd's beating that ass. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so like, now fast forward to last summer. If that, it went to a whole new level, okay? It went to a whole new level. Um, there's a part of the show sometimes that it's the adult version of a show, 
Um, I don't know how much of a Prince fan you are, but on one of the albums, um, called it's called Dirty Mind. The album cover is just him in a, a trench coat and a small G string, and he has he has thigh high stockings on, and uh, so that was the outfit that he toured in. Okay, so he literally toured in that outfit. So I come out in that outfit for a song or two, well, only for the adult version shows, right? We were somewhere out of town. It was an outdoor show. And the crowd was really into it. Like I've never seen it before. Like they were crazy. Like the birds were out in, the in birds full form. Were out in yeah. <laughs> the, the baby birds were out in full form. And and I remember even thinking to myself, man, they're this handsy already. I could imagine what they're gonna do when I come out in the G string. That G string's coming off. <laughs> <laughs> So I come out there and I do my thing. And I remember looking up and putting my arms up and, you know, with the jacket open, you know, the G string out and like, and the hands are coming up. I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun or whatever. And I remember looking down and literally, I swear to God, it happened so fast, but she was, this woman was like, almost like sideways flying through the air. She jumped and Far enough, she literally grabbed my G-string and pulled it down. <laughs> so my shit was literally hanging out on stage. <laughs> I, I have never experienced that ever in my life, like that happening. I remember just pulling back and turning to the band going, like, what the fuck? <laughs> They're like, dude, your dick's out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not the first time my dick's been on stage. Because <laughs> uh, those are different stories, but those were accidents. I well, got the wrong business, man. I should have tried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, that yeah, that was crazy. I and mean, that's pretty much the wildest story. But my dick's been on stage, out on stage, two times other than that, though. But those were accidents. <laughs> man. Like, oh, look, Sky yeah. gave you balloons for that. <laughs> I don't know if you were able to see that the last guy I interviewed the same thing happened a little thumbs up came out of a little speech bubble out of his little mouth and he didn't see it but I did and I thought I was crazy you know and then now I just seen with you you know like all these balloons just came up behind you I don't know if you saw it no yeah yeah I just you'll see it in the I'll send you a little bit video of it when I edit it just, just a bunch of balloons coming up behind you it's, uh, Skype's doing weird stuff now. It's, it's like, man, it makes you feel like they're listening. You know what I mean? Why are you listening? Well, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Since you don't seem to really have too much of a of a of a, of a family home life, you know, uh, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. Then, what is your uh, what is your conspiracy theories? Do you have any? Nah, I mean. I mean, I, I listen to people's thoughts on, on any kind of stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm pretty much on the fence on it because I mean, I do believe that there's some shady shit going on with our, our government, uh, for sure. I mean, I have no doubt on that. Um, like they're always, they're always listening to us right. and all this, this is not just between you and me, even like right now, right. you know? I mean, even when you're not on your phone, they're listening. I believe that. Yeah. Because there's way too many times I'll be talking to somebody um, and, like, not even on the phone, but then I'll go onto my phone and then the ad about what we were talking about pops up. Yep. Stuff like that, you know. What's uh, been the, the, hard, the hardest moment as, as, a, as a musician? What has been the hardest moment for you? Everyone's got a moment that defines them and, and like, it's some kind of turning point, you know? So, like, some people got multiple. Uh, like to hear at least one of yours. Um, you know what? Um, I mean, really, it was just when I, I took this on, really, I guess just taking this whole Prince gig on, um, like I said, I was nowhere near the level that I am now when I first started. So I knew how much work I had ahead of me, 
you know, and it's still like a lifetime's work ahead of me, you know, even more. Um, so yeah, that's it's super hard, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But like you said before, I can tell really that you needed those mental health days, you know, before and that's kind of where it drags you down into when you're going and going and going that that ends up being the yeah. hardest part is balancing you know when, when to say no to certain things so you can make sure you stay right. um, yeah exactly um what in your opinion is your biggest accomplishment the moment you stood up there and was like this is the best Um, actually, um, not too long ago, cause I have a, a new lineup. I don't know if Josh told you when he was on your show last that he's with the band now, right? Uh, that was, uh, like a year and a half ago. I had a... oh, Josh, Josh is in the band now. Nice. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. So he left Cherry Pie to be with you guys. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. it wasn't to retire or anything. Good. What do you feel no. about his shaved head? How'd you feel about that? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. He looks great. Yeah. Yeah. I, he's one of the people but, that I can see that that only that, he, that, that you can make the long hair work and you can make bald work. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think it's great. <laughs> but to answer your, your question was very recently, um, it was just so weird because it just happened like all of a sudden like my eyes opened. During the show, and it happened during the show too, I realized that this lineup that I have right now, because it's a great, it's all new lineup, except for the bassist, um, who's been with us for a for years now. Um, I realized that this lineup that I have right now is the best lineup that I've had ever. Like Josh Becker is the best keyboard player I've had through all the keyboard players. He's just amazing. And uh, not only in his playing, but how he can create the sounds that sounds just like the record. So, um, but the the drummer, just the whole vibe. Um, the guy who I have playing uh, lead for me now, AJ Karts, this young kid, just amazing. And he's constantly growing and getting better and better his whole life vibe. Um, I like he's not just standing there or scared. He's like not afraid to expand himself, you know. And people are loving him live, you know. Yeah, he's got, yeah. He's, he's got a stage presence, you know. Yeah. Um, what do you see you guys doing? Are you, are you guys figuring on going bigger now that you had this better lineup? Or? Yes, we've been wanting to go out of the country. So, yeah. I guess the there's demand is talk. going for it, yeah. Yeah. Um, there has been a couple of... Um, from different people going to Australia. Um, so I don't know. Um, and there was a, a UK thing that was brought up. But, you know, it's like things get brought up, but doesn't mean it's going to happen. But it was strange. There's two different people talked about the, the Aussie thing. And I'm like, wow. Um, or we can go to, to Canada. We, there's a couple of things that got brought about in Canada. So I don't know, you know. Um the band is excited to do something like that, though. That that is amazing. Yeah, it is. I wouldn't. You know, kind of hearing it, 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 it literally sounds like you. It it really does sounds like you were a, like 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 you were the replacement. Like you went from local celebrity to national celebrity overnight as soon as it's passed. You know, and like that had to be insane. You know, and yeah. being thrust it into that, and you know, it's actually surprising that these many years have gone by and nobody's asked for you guys to go across the sea sooner. You know, I'm sure as you see, yeah. as soon as people, you know, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, but how much would it cost to bring them and at least their main gear over? Like we can have like some other stuff here, but they're gonna at least need their guitars, their kits, the little wood, and then yeah. it's gonna be a lot to bring in. You know, so once they see the dollar signs, they're like, okay, I don't know about that. But it's <laughs> it's, it's it's gotta be amazing to feel how that really just fell into place for you just and how accepting people are of the change. Yes. 
I mean, I'm very thankful. Um, every single day I, I say thanks. Um, and I thank Prince at every single show um, for allowing me to, to do this and for him just giving the world the music that we, we bring to them, to the masses. Um, I'm very thankful. I never take anything for, for granted or, you know, never um, just act like I'm on a different, on a higher level than anybody else. You know what I mean? I see people, you know, who just are in a band and they're doing well, they just act different. Like they'll act like they're better than people, you know? And I just never understood that whole vibe. Like there's other Prince guys that are out there and I've heard stories that, oh yeah, that guy thinks he's actually Prince and he acts very arrogant and blah, 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 you know? And I'm like, yeah, I don't get that, man. I'm like, you gotta be humble and, you know, because we're all on the same level. Everybody is, you know. So people can do things better than others, but doesn't make you a better person, you know. Just because you can sing better or play guitar better than somebody doesn't make you a better person right. than them. Just like some, the same instance where somebody, which I never understood this, where if somebody is poor, somebody who has money will look down on them. Like, oh, you're just a poor blah, blah, blah. And then they'll act like they're not worth as much. Like, but you're this, you're a human. He's a human too. You're both human beings, you know, and just because you have more things, you know, right? more money does it make you a better person, you know? Yeah, you probably had a better leg up. You either had some family that left you some money, you know, you collected a life insurance policy from a dead relative, you, you know, you, you know, most likely did something like that, or you had, you know, family that took care of you and paid all your bills till you were 25, and all the money you made from 15 to 25 just went to the savings. You know, you had a yeah. trust fund, you know, you know, there's like yeah. a lot of things that play into that where a lot of people didn't have that, you know, and it's and yeah. it's more often than, than, than not that, you know, the people that, you know, grew up with less, you know, are way more normal when they do get things. They are way more of actual better people, you know, so yeah. it's like kind of, it's, 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 it's kind of crazy, you know, instead of approaching, you know, arrogant people, you know, I know a lot of people with money that are actually really cool because they started with nothing, you know, but I also know yes. a, lot with money, a lot of people with money that, um, I've always had yep. it or um, looked down on you exactly how you said. So it's like, it's crazy how many people will go to that person and give them everything they want. It's like they're rich, they can afford it. Why are you giving it to them for free? Exactly. It's you just, it's just crazy. Because obviously he can't afford it and he needs it. You know? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I've, I've seen studies of, of how people act with, with homeless people and poor people. Like, to me, like my heart, I have a... a super huge heart for for when i'm driving past and i see a homeless person or with a you know under a bridge or something i just i get like just like oh my gosh i wish i could help them you know that type of stuff i don't like look down and like oh that piece of junk you know look at that loser over there i don't think any of that you know at all man it's like i never understood why people do that but i've seen studies where people would how people will act to people who don't have money and even they don't have that much money themselves, but they're like, oh, you're just a poor person. And I'm like, wow, that is crazy how people do see people that way. Yeah, the homeless thing but really comes into play because, you know, like I come from an area with a lot of, you know, homeless and and it was crazy. A lot of them don't want help. A lot of them, you know, they prefer to be that way, uh, you know, but you yeah. know, there are a lot of cases where it's they have a mental illness and they have no family, you know, or uh, they're, uh, yeah. they're a military vet that got fucked over, you know, and, and it's like there's a lot of things that, you know, when you when you look at a homeless person, you don't know the story. Yeah. You know, so it's like, how do they yeah. end up like this? And, and that's when your brain starts going, it's like, uh, oh, man, all the different situations that could have been. But there also is a lot of the simple times, you know, where like, you're, where you're like, well, like you see a guy and he's just nothing but dusty and you're just like, hey, man, here, here's like, you know, 15 bucks, go right there and go get yourself a nice meal, you know what I'm saying, warm yourself up. And he was, oh, man, thanks, man. You see him walk right into the liquor store. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah. I had hope. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually I'm in the early, early stages of creating something. Um, it's going to be called MKE Tribute Fest. And, uh, actually it's my first time talking about it and to anybody besides, Ooh. um, the very few people that I, that I have who are going to be helping me with this. 
um, I have a small group of people um, who are going to have our first meeting, actually not even until next week, Tuesday. So this is, that's how new it is. But what it's going to be basically is um, an all day event, all tributes, um, probably starting at noon and goes until 10 o'clock at night. So all day. Um, and it's going to be charity. Um, it's going to be one huge charity that I'm going to pick, which will be probably either for probably homeless. Cause I, like I said, I have a, a huge heart for that or, or to, to feed families, you know, one of the two, but then what I want each band that is playing throughout the day, I want them to pick a local, another charity that they want. So they'll, it'll be several charities. It'll be all, all day will be just different, different charities. So it'll be one big giant one that I'm going to pick. Um, that'll probably be throughout the country, like a one that'll be not just here in town, but then the other bands will be doing more local stuff. Um, so that is in the early stages and uh, I'll let you know when things start moving with that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be huge though. It's not going to be just at a small bar. It's going to be in a big place. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Shut down the city blockers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a whole pub crawl going for it. Oh yeah, all the businesses going on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That that that's gonna be really good to see. That we're gonna get you back on the show so you can promote that out once that starts coming around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I am really excited about that. I have a, a really group, really nice uh, group of people that are gonna help me because you know everybody has their their strengths. Like I know people who I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, and you're gonna think I'm crazy. I want to do this at the Pfizer. <laughs> yes. I know. Um, and even the guy who I'm going to ask doesn't even know about this. Yes. <laughs> That's how I'm telling you, this is just like brand new. Um, and I know the guy who's going to be coming here next week, Tuesday to my house. I'm going to bring it up to him and say, dude, I know you're in the Pfizer. You know, you do work there. I, w- I want to do the show there. <laughs> you know? yeah. oh. um, it has to be big. It needs to be huge. I want people to come from out of town for this event, you know, and I want to do it every year. If hopefully it's going to go over great. And then we do it every year, you know, and who knows, maybe at some point we start bringing people or bands from out of state, you know, to, to do, cause I've been on the road. I've seen other, other like opening acts for us. And, uh, there've been some really good tributes, man. I'd say, wow, these guys are great. Uh, it'd be awesome to work with them, but you know, who knows? Maybe I'll it, this thing starts really going. I'll start contacting out out of state bands that I know are really good, and have them part of it. You know. Yeah, uh, there's actually a lot of a lot of the major bands, like actual industry bands, that have uh, been finding home in Wisconsin. So okay. you can reach out to anyone from Disturbed to Skillet. And they all live right here, you know, even like Devil Wars part of like really hard metal. Like, I mean, like really all of these guys are calling Wisconsin their home. Yeah. So you don't even really need to go too far to get major names. Right yeah. On the bill. They're like, hey, you know, you know, disturbed, you got to do something because we're right down the street. It's for a benefit, <laughs> screw it. Skillet too, you know, like get on it. You know, Skillet's a Christian band, so I mean, I'm sure they're they're definitely on it. So yeah, like yeah, I I really hope that that thing does pop off for you. I really do because that'd be awesome Thank to you. see. Thank you. Yeah, it should be. A, it'll be a lot of hard work, but I think it's gonna do a lot of great work. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, actually as well as because there's a lot of the you, you guys get faced with the decision of which charity to choose from because you're worried about what percentage are they taking, how much is actually going to the homeless, what okay, what programs do they have, how easily it is it yeah. they, you know, do the homeless people actually know about it, you know, like do they any do anything kind of reach, so, you know, do they, you know, so there's a lot of questions that go into it, so. I mean, if there's something that big that generates that much money, you know, probably look at also doing your own other end, your own charity. Yeah. That you guys yeah. now run. Okay, now after this event, we rent out, you know, this uh, big space and we give a bunch of stuff to homeless people, We're calling all homeless people to come out and get your grab bag of a bag in a tent, you know, mess kit, yeah. you know, type thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, that'd be awesome, you know, so you know where that money is going, not in somebody's pockets. Exactly. Yep. So, oh. man, I really, I, I see the greatness. In <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I, it's been something I've been wanting to do 
for a couple of years now, you know, and to be honest with you, when I was a kid, um, not that I'm, I'm famous, whatever, but, but I remember thinking to myself, like, I mean, I, I would like to be rich and famous so I could, I can do shows and, and do charity shows. So as, as a kid, I was thinking this, you know, like, this is the reason why I wanted to, to play music or part of it, you know, you know, so I finally, I'm, I'm able to do what I've been wanting to do since I was a kid, you know. That's got to, man, you are just kind of accomplishing all different kinds of things. So, like, yeah, when I asked about, you know, what, what, what's been the best part, you're like, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Let everybody know where to find you uh, and what shows you got coming up and uh, how to be a part of them. Okay. Um, you can find me. Um, the, the band's website is theprinceexperience.com. You can find us on Facebook as well, just under the Prince Experience. Um, we are next. Hometown show is coming up kind of soon. And tickets are on sale. The Paps Theater, March 9th. Um, looking forward to that because it's a brand new lineup, like I said. Um, can't wait to, to show them off here in, in town. Tickets are selling really well. I, I just checked and tickets are selling really well. We also have a pre-show party. So um, to buy the pre-show party tickets, you have to have a ticket for the show. And you buy the tickets for the pre-show party on our website, theprinceexperience.com. But if you want to just buy just the show tickets, you can. I would just go to the Paps Theater. Do not go to any outside source because the ticket prices will be way higher, like $200, $300 a ticket, which is stupid. Um, because I purposely told them I, don't, I want it more in the $25 to $30 range, which is normal-ish for a theater show. So... Make sure if you're going to buy tickets for the show, you go to the Paps Theater and get them from there, from their site. That's a tip for every show, for everybody. Go to the exactly. Source. Go to the source. Yes, for any show. Yeah. You know, go to the band if you can, because sometimes, you know, you yeah. don't get tickets. <laughs> exactly. Well, shit, that has been awesome. We're going to go ahead and wrap that one up. So, uh, everybody have fun. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And if you do, Name it after me.